How do you analyze it? What's the second chord? You got a one on the pickup. Mm -hmm. What's next? Say again. Two chord. Good. With the suspension. Good. What did you write, Chesha? Uh, two, seven, two, six, and a, f a five below it. Good. Right. How did I get? So we need. So I'll copy the base here. Okay, so here's our E, we got our two, and you say seven, six, five, like so. Good, okay. Now, you know this sounds similar to the Okay, well, because yeah. um, well, this is throwing me off, the, the fact that we had to write five in there, or is that because that's the added term? Oh, you have a fifth above the base, because you have a, a seventh. Back for the, uh, Back this, this way. Yeah. The A, um, the a flat, is that? Yeah, D flat, the A flat gives you the fifth. In the end, it'll be a two, once this results, right, two, six. two, six, five. But there's still the A that's in there. Yes. Okay, okay, I see that now, okay. So that, but that's all right? Good, yeah, that's great. Okay, and that's not confusing? Because it, because it, because it's still like, when I see a one, six, four, maybe I'm just confusing myself. I may, I may be okay. Because that's what I wrote. It looks, I, yeah, it looks like a six, four. Yeah. yeah. But you realize it does It's just because it's a loose. suspension, so it's Yeah. Not, okay, so it's just becoming oh, a, a okay. one, six. It's not. Right. Okay. Right, that's good. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, did I ask you to do I guess not. No. But tell me about it. Two function is uh, predominant. Predominant. Good. And it goes to this, which is dominant. Dominant. And gets to time. Now wait a minute. Is that a cadence? No. Okay, no. it's not a cadence. What do you do? Parentheses. Parentheses around it. And say, okay, that is a complete thought. Uh, but it's tucked away within a larger thought, kind of like a clause inside a sentence. I love concepts analysis. <laughs> <laughs> That's my thought, okay? I love concept analysis. I prepare very carefully because I love concepts analysis. Okay? <laughs> so we're still waiting. This is, I prepare very carefully. And now we need to say the rest of the sentence. We need a, we need a, a verb and we need a subject up there. Okay, so let's see what we do next here. because this continues to be a one chord. And we get five, four, three, one, five, six, five, four, three, of. Have you seen that symbol before? You could do five, four, three, of, five, with slash mm -hmm. notation. That works too. But this is another way to show that it's applied to something else. It's not the five, it's five of. Five, the next thing we'll write. Okay, now I need somebody to fill that in. Aaron, you want to write up for us what you put right there? Um, what measures that, sorry? That's the uh, cadence, first cadence. And the first line. <coughs>
Yeah, okay, good. That's seven eighths, right, but there's something else too. Mm -hmm. There's another note that moves across that bar line. The A flat goes to the G. Mm -hmm. Give intervals. Oh, that's four. Yeah, sorry, that's four three. <laughs> yeah, good. Right on. That's it. So, so what's the seven eight? Um, the D natural seven two. What's that called though? When you um, hold a note over and then go up. <laughs> I get them all confused. <laughs> How about the one that goes down? You know what that is? Four three. Um, yeah, so suspension. Good. Suspension. Suspension. Retardation. Retardation. Yeah. Very good. You got it. So, so is it not necessary, because, uh, yeah, cause I was just going to ask about this, to say like sharp 7, 8, because it's outside, it's it's a accidental. People who are particular about figures, they'll always do that. Okay. I'm not going to be so particular. Okay. But, yeah. Do you, you use plus, minus, or sharp, flat, or does it matter? Well, you don't have to. If, if you're or do natural. Or natural. Article, Ooh. The, accidental. The, accidental. the actual if accidental is written. Okay. That works too. Okay. But you don't see that so much with sevens. And you see it a lot with other ones where it's, you know, because we see this all the time. It's just an indication that it's seven. So that's a little confusing. But it's perfectly fine to do it on there. And you'll see it. If you ever try and realize like a Bach thing and, you know, the continuum part, it's it's all, in a lot of modern editions, they had to pay somebody to realize all that stuff. Mm. But if you're doing it like, from, if you're improvising at the keyboard using figure bass, you have to know that symbol because you're going to see six slash and four slash two a lot. That's just another way to say that that note's raised whatever external it might take to raise it. Here we need to use a natural, not a sharp, or else we need to get a sharp. <laughs> okay, so this phrase comes to a half cadence here. Absolutely. Yeah, he changes things. <laughs> he changes things, the second phrase. But did you hear the relationship between these two phrases? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is this thing called? These two phrases together, yeah, they're a theme, but how is he presenting his materials? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the motivic structure, motive, motive, and But that was just one of the phrases. This ends with what kind of cadence here? Half. First phrase ends with? Half. Half. And then the second phrase ends with EAC, perfect authentic cadence. Okay, if you have weak and strong, you have a what? Phrase. Two phrase. Antecedent consequent. Put them together, you get a period. 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 <laughs> Excellent. I just came out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 Sentence is a misnomer. It has nothing to do with the degree of closure. It can be half key and it can be whatever. Okay, misnomer. Give us, give, us the, give us the sentence definition. Again. Sentence is motive, motive again, same motive again. And then something twice as long with some measure of continuity within it. So it's called the continuation. Motive, motive, okay. continuation. And it's important that it has these durational patterns. Th this durational pattern. Right. Motive is a unit long. When you repeat it, you get that unit again, and the continuation is twice that length. So it's like A, A, B, or A, A, A prime, something like that. Mm -hmm. But it may not it may not come to a conclusion. It may not be a... Mm -hmm. okay. Right on, yeah. Okay, okay. But uh, a period is well-named because it's, it means that you've got some measure of closure. You've got that punctuation mark at the end. You've got an authentic cadence. And it's got to be stronger than any other cadence that precedes it within that period. That's why it sort of coheres. Half cadence is you have in the air. So you're waiting for closure and then you get it. 
in the next phrase. That makes them work together. Yeah, because they start so much alike, that sort of glues them together too. So this is called a parallel period. But the, it's the conventional closure, withholding it and then presenting it, that, that creates a unit of music here. Okay, so we've got in the second phrase, one, two, six chord embellished, two, six, five really embellished, and then a funky chord. Mm. Now, some of you talked to me about this already, but let's just notice a few things. See the bass, D flat, goes down a half step, right? Mm -hmm. Now listen to the top part, and do you see another half step resolution? The B natural. B, yeah. So you've got two notes that wedge apart from one another. They move by half step and they arrive on one interval. Oh, an octave. Octave. What chord that you know does that kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Are you saying it? I French. French. <laughs> okay, good. And you said? German. German does that too? And one other? Italian. The Italian. They're all the augmented six chords. They have that distinctive resolution. Wedging apart, half step motion, and then arrival on an octave. Maybe it's French. Now, this is French. Yeah. How can you tell French just by French. hearing it? French. French. Is the French that's all four? It's got four separate notes right. and Yeah. No four. An Italian, six three. It's got six three. So you can tell what it is just by looking at the intervals above the bass. Let me write that again. Say those again really quick. So please. Italian six. We usually learn that this way, as having these scale degrees in it. We have a German. Well, let me do the French next. French four three. And they all have that augmented six in there. And you just have to know what else goes in your mouth to look that way. Right? The complete label for a 4 3 chord is 6 4 3. And we need that 6 because it's the augmented 6. That's essential to what it is. It's an augmented 6 chord, one tiny. Alright, for this, we need to have that same basic ingredient, the same basic ingredient, with one addition. We add scale degree. One, two. Yeah. You're in Italy, you're on one. You move up from the boot, you're in the middle of Europe, that's two. Go a little higher and you're in Germany, flat three. Okay? Mm -hmm. So add two. I'm going to switch up again. See if this one's replenished itself. So, okay, much better. Two, and then if we want a German, six, five. Remember, there's a three there as well. It, requires that we add not a two, but the lowered scale degree three. In other words, the version of scale degree three that you find in Maya. Now, I don't need to know these intervals, I mean these scale degrees anymore, when it's like this, because I'm on a new scale degree. It's not built on flat six. Augmented six, their natural home, is on flat six. That's where they normally occur. Well, think about this. Dominance normally occur, like a dominant seven chord, normally appears on scale degree five. Mm -hmm. This one does not. That's a dominant seventh in inversion. But it's built on scale degree two. It's been transplanted, moved somewhere new. It's an applied dominant or a secondary dominant, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you can have secondary or applied augmented six chords too. This is one of them. It's not in its home. It's not on flat six in the bass. It's on what scale degree? Four. Four. So we're applying this. Now see, that, that resolution should go to scale degree five, right? Flat six in the bass goes to five, sharp four up top, and they wedge apart and they land on octaves, fives. Fives an octave apart. 
but this has been moved to a new place, scale degree three, and goes to scale degree four octaves on it. So, augmented six are predominant chords, right? That's what they are. Mm -hmm. They go to the dominant. This goes to three. Mm -hmm. Weird. Okay, so it's been applied. Not, it doesn't go to five, it goes to three. This is a French for three of, not five would be its normal home, to go there, but it resolves to three. And you can write it like this, but then he also tricks you and makes it major. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So do you write that it as the minor or the major? Well, you, when you do of, you just do that because you don't know where it's going to go. Okay. You know, before you hear the resolution, you write. Right. Now, with the arrow notation, you would just do French four three, arrow of, and then write what it is, which is uppercase. Three. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is an applied French four three. Yeah. So. Okay. So he changes that up, and then I can move on to that phrase. Oh, and how does he decorate that? The three, make it major, make it uppercase. How does he decorate it? Four, three, four, four, three. Four, three. Four, three, yeah. And there you might want to do four natural three just to show that it's a special three. You're not expecting E natural, you're expecting E flat. It's sharp five, it's raised. And then he restores the five to what you expect, to E flat. You see what that is? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he starts to descend, five, four, three, two, one in the melody. Uh, just to check your chords, you have the five, four, three, one to one, mm -hmm. and then the predominant, two, six. Mm -hmm. Five with some embellishment, the six, five you could notate mm -hmm. as well. So five, it's got a seventh, but also a six, five motion, six dash five. And then the final chord has got a whole bunch of embellishment. Mm -hmm. So, Shao Shao, what did you get there for embellishment on the very last chord? This, mm -hmm. it's a one, nine, two, eight, four, two, three. Good, and there's, I think there's one more. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Seven, eight, eight. retardation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seven, eight, retardation. Okay. Is that G going to that? G going to that. Good. Okay. So there, there are a lot of places where he creates a lot of nice tension by not allowing the 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 chords to change together. It's like the bass changes and then everything else has to gradually get where it wants to go. And that creates some wonderful tension. Let's just listen to that one more time. It's so nice. Again, this is Alfred Brendel performing. This might not be where you want to go with this, but if we were to try to put a um, function model on this, how would we do that on the second phrase? Oh, that's a good question. So yeah, you're, the three is really hard to pinpoint right. what sort of function you'd want to give it to because it's surprisingly far off. Right. But I, I, could, I could view it as a tonic substitute. And I could hear okay. that French 4-3, mm -hmm. in retrospect, as a dominant leading into it. Okay. Because of the leading tone there. In fact, if you wanted to, I suppose you could even think of that as an altered dominant. You see? If you're going to tonicize C, you should have a G chord, right? This is almost a G7. What one note do I need to change to get the chord written there at, four, at the fourth day? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, you'd have to change the bass. You'd have to raise the bass. It's lowered, so it could be. So if you wanted to do pop symbols, you'd do G. So if you're a jazzer, then the way you're at French, right? Mm -hmm. You don't do that. <laughs> you're right. 
It's a G7 basically with a flat, flat five, five. Mm -hmm. and then you show that that flat five is in the base by writing D flat mm -hmm. under the slash. Mm -hmm. Right. That slash means something else, right? It does not mean of. Right. 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 So, over, yeah. over. Okay, so that's a that's one way to take that as a as a dominant. But it's all really funky, so you better put a substitute on there. <laughs> you know, maybe even not a subscript, but T S, you know, the screaming. And then and then we're gonna go uh, back to tonic through a passing five four three. Predominant dominant tonic. And that's easy from there. But it's just tricky to decide how you're gonna treat that three chord. That's that's uh, that's the wild one there. Okay. Notice that in each case you go to a climax, F, which is dissonant in some way in the insurance all, and that initiates a descent in the melody. I'm talking about the highest uh, in the mm -hmm. melody. Yeah. It has that shape, you know, da -dee -dum, da -da -dum, in both cases. Or da -da -dum, da -da yeah, <laughs> so in each case you go up and then come down. It's all just a matter of yeah. getting down and just sort of letting you softly land. 